there and thank you for stopping by this video and or my channel um, if you don't know who I am my name is Jordan Page Suddeth um, I am a writer and a filmmaker and an actor and kind of some other stuff but that's not what this video is about this video as you can tell by the title is uh, about my autism story and my autism uh, diagnosis uh, so this video is going to cover um, why I decided to get tested for ASD, what was that testing process like, how did I feel after I got my answers, and a few other things. I'm 19 years old. Uh, as I'm filming this, it is February 28th of 2021, and I was diagnosed on, I believe it was February 11th of 2021. So uh, it hasn't even been a month since my diagnosis, and so I was diagnosed at 19 and slipped under the radar for 19 years. I first want to say a big thank you to everyone who asked me these questions on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and um, just uh, there's an anonymous form I have as well. So if you yourself after this video or during this video have any other questions um, about autism or my specific autism story, please feel free to comment them down below. Feel free to contact me on any of my social medias. Um, they are all in the description below as well as an anonymous form it's a google form completely anonymous if you want to type in a question there so no one will know who you are or who who asked the question uh that totally works too i am more than happy to answer anything literally i am such an open book i just want to help answer questions if you're curious about something and if i can help answer it then that's what i want to do so no question is too personal, no question is too out there or strange, so feel free to ask me anything. I do apologize if you see a lot of cats during this video. My door is open, meaning not only my cat, but my housemate's cats can come in and out, so bear with me. Question number one. There's about a three-part question, but uh, what led to this diagnosis? What autistic traits do I exhibit slash what information, signs, or experiences made me think I could be autistic, and how did I learn about autism? I'm gonna do a completely separate video on my autistic traits, um, both now and the ones I had as a child that we didn't realize were autistic traits at the time. To start out, um, I uh, did not think at all that I may be on the spectrum until probably about two years ago. I can't remember exactly what it was that um, made me start to question it but whatever it was it was really really brief because it was right before my family was about to move and right before I was about to go to college so we did end up going to someone to ask them questions I can't remember if it was a psychologist just a, I can't remember exactly who it was we decided to kind of put it to the side because I was going to be going to college so soon so sure enough I go to college um my college was a one year by the way that's why I'm 19 and I'm out of college um so I went to college completely forgot about it like it wasn't even on my mind then now cut to about january of this year i was on instagram and uh, a girl by the name of paige layal showed up on uh my instagram explore page and i started looking at her account and i i saw that it said she was autistic and i was like wait what whoa like i never i never would have expected that so i start looking through the um resources she has on her page um, or one of her highlights on her Instagram um, that just uh, the more and more I'm looking at it I'm going wow I can really relate to that and I can really relate to that too and you know wow like I am adding up a lot more than I thought to this I'm so very self-conscious about my arms so if you see me messing with them that's why but I'm telling myself not to cover them because eh. <laughs> um, I did a nosedive into solid research for like a whole day and or the whole like second half of that day started watching videos from women who were autistic talking about their stories and how they weren't diagnosed until they were so much later um watched some of Paige's videos on YouTube and other creators and and just really started getting all of this information so what I did with this information is I put it all into a notes page on my phone and I made a list of reasons why I believed I may be on the spectrum I expected this list to have maybe 15 to 20 points that was going to be enough fact for me to want to continue with potentially getting testing. I ended up with 56 points on that list, so needless to say, yes, that was definitely enough fact for me to say, you know what, I think this is enough for me to want to get testing. Now, as I said, I'm going to be doing a whole separate video on what uh, these traits were. Um, I might even go over, 
this is rocket sorry um i might even go over what uh what was on that list because they all i think ended up being autistic traits uh, that I had experienced or do experience. Question number two, how did I approach the diagnosis? Did I ever fear like it was all in my head? Absolutely. Uh, that's the whole reason why I made that list for myself. I'm a very fact-based person. Um, and so because of that, I felt like I needed to have the facts or enough facts for me to want to get a diagnosis. So yes, I did have a really big fear of me going, oh my gosh, like, am I just overthinking this? Like, I honestly was so terrified that I was going to be wrong. Uh, I really, really hate being wrong, um, which it's, you know, it's something, it's not horrible, but if I can be right, I would prefer to be right, which is why I will likely do research on a subject before I say my, what I believe the fact to be. As for approaching diagnosis, after I created this list, um, I, I got I went to my mom, um, and I said, "Hey, this is kind of what I've put together." So we both agreed that maybe getting testing was something that was plausible. I reached out to my therapist, who I have been going to for many years. Shout out to Sarah; she's awesome. And I asked her um, if she knew of any psychologists who could do this testing. Thankfully, there is a psychologist or a psychology group right in her building. Um, the one in her building is called Psych Discovery. Uh, they were absolutely phenomenal. So thankfully she connected me with them and I started to chat with them about the type of testing that I was hoping to get. So this kind of leads me right into the third question, which is how did I get a diagnosis and when did I start seeking one out? So uh, as I mentioned previously, I started seeking one out probably at the middle of uh, January. I got really, really lucky because usually um, psychological evaluations take time to get in, but thankfully um, it was looking like my testing would take place near the end of March, but they had a cancellation and I got to do my testing at the end of January, which I feel so, so fortunate that that happened to me and I'm, I'm very grateful. So yes, that is about how I got the diagnosis was through my therapist who was able to recommend me to a psychologist who she believed would be a good fit and they just happened to be in the same building. Now, on to question number four. What was the testing process like? Now, if there's interest in this, I would be more than happy to do a video going over like my results page because I did get done an entire psychological evaluation, not just an ASD assessment, which was really, really helpful and really fascinating. Um, so if there's interest, I would be more than happy to do a video talking about my results and what exact tests they did on me. What, what does a adult full psychological evaluation look like? If there's interest in that, let me know. But the testing process overall went like this. First, I started off with a virtual intake meeting. It was virtual because of COVID. Um, it was about an hour and a half long. The day after that, I had my main testing session, which was four hours long, and it was the only in-person part of the whole examination. Uh, at that four-hour exam, she told me she wanted to do an additional hour of testing via Zoom a few days after. So a few days after my four-hour testing, I did have an hour on Zoom with her where she did another part of the exam, which ended up being the ASD um, uh, exam, basically. From there, she also uh, talked to my therapist for about half an hour. Um, then after that, she also talked to my mom on the phone for about an hour and a half as well. All put together, that is eight and a half hours of testing slash evaluation to get these results that I did. Then it was, as I said, I believe it was February 11th that I had my results meeting, which was on Zoom, and it was about an hour and a half long. The results are digital, but they are you can print them out if you want. And I did get sent the results, which is fantastic, and they are 25 pages long. So full psychological evaluation for an adult, I ended up with 25 pages. So yes, at that results meeting was when I got the diagnosis that I uh, was officially diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. The results also restated uh, something that I did already know, which was that I also have generalized anxiety disorder, but I was diagnosed with that at 14. So it was kind of nice to get the re-diagnosis in a way during this uh, full examination as well. Uh, number five, how did I feel after I got my answers? I felt absolutely thrilled um i was i remember talking to my mom and my my housemate um a few days before the results and i remember saying it would be a relief 
to get the ASD diagnosis simply because I had done so much research research and I would I was so so convinced that I was on the right track and that I was right that it would be such a relief to have this diagnosis and to have it make sense why I am the way that I am right and and so I was so relieved and and I actually I got off the results meeting and I I started crying happy tears I it's actually I do daily vlogs which is on this channel and if you want to go back you you can find the vlog from February 11th and I, I'm crying at the end of it um because I was just I was so happy that I was right and that I now had a reason for why you know my my why my brain works a little bit differently it did take about two weeks from my um four hour session to get those results which is not bad at all and lastly what advice would I give to someone with less obvious symptoms or high masking ability or what advice would I give to someone who's thinking about getting tested or may assume that they're on the spectrum um, my advice for the first part of the question, my symptoms were not obvious. It took 19 years for, there's my cat Nola. It took 19 years for anyone and that, that someone was me to start suspecting that my brain may work differently, um, than neurotypical people. Um, my ability to mask is extremely high. Um, and because I got diagnosed so late, I am still trying to figure out in what situations I mask and how I mask because it that feels first nature to me. My advice for both of these questions would be if you believe that you may be on the spectrum or if you are starting to question, I would suggest um, doing a whole bunch of uh, research. I'm gonna link down below um, some of the videos that really helped me um, when I was watching and when I was doing this research. Um, if I can find some of the uh, if I can find some of the article links as well, I'll link those as well. Um, I would suggest watching those or just doing some some research. YouTube videos are especially helpful because um, um, if you can really kind of see the person um, and, and hear about their own individual experiences. I would also suggest um, if you're a really fact-based person like I am and you feel like, no, I don't want to get tested until I'm I'm almost positive, I would also suggest making a list. Um, it can be a physical list. It can be a list on your phone. Whatever it is of after you've done this, this research, reasons why you may believe uh, you may be on the spectrum. And from, and from that list, it may really, really help you um, kind of figure out if you feel that testing is the next step for you. The other thing I would absolutely recommend is I would recommend, even if you're only suspecting ASD, I would recommend getting a full psychological evaluation, not just an ASD exam. The reason for that being is that sometimes ASD can be very similar to ADHD. In my case, uh, this was not the case. It ended up being ASD, not ADHD. But sometimes it's the opposite or sometimes it can be both. With that being said, if you've only been tested for ASD, but you end up actually also having ADHD or ADD or OCD or anxiety, it may not test and it's not going to pick up on those things. So sure, you'll get one answer, but you may not get all of the answers that will kind of explain the map of your brain to yourself. And that's it for this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Um, I am really looking forward to doing more of these um, because I just genuinely feel so wonderful at being able to like starting to understand myself more. And if I can, you know, help other people figure their way, you know, figure out their way through their brain and maybe help them to get to testing or to a diagnosis um, like these other videos did for me, um, I, like, that's my goal. Like, that's what I want to do. I am looking forward to doing more of these. The videos that I plan to do in the future, so please let me know if you would, uh, if you would like any additional ones to this, um, is I want to do one, um, on my traits, both now and traits I had as a child. I would like to do a video on school and what I struggled with in school, um, that wasn't struggle enough to you know, propose that maybe something was, was different. Um, 
but some things that I did struggle with that I had to push past that I would have preferred to maybe have an alternate option. And then if there is interest, I would love to do a video going over the results page that I have. Of course, not in complete detail, but in enough detail to tell you maybe what a full psychological evaluation consists of or the one that I had consisted of, as well as uh, maybe a separate video on the specific assessment, the ASD assessment I was given to share what that assessment may be like. If you have any more video ideas or any more videos you would like me to do, um, please feel free to let me know. As I said, you can comment down below, you can get in touch with me on any of my social medias which are in the description, or you can ask them via the completely anonymous Google form link which is also down below. Thank you so much again and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. But if you watch my vlogs, you'll see me tomorrow. Bye.